thanks for tuning in to another episode of Form Scan. We're previewing the Cora on Saturday, the 1st of September, the 31st of August, sorry. And um, we're here with Mark Boylan to preview Pat Small and Race Day. I suppose feature race on the card is Irish Cambridge. Mark, look, there's no group ones on the card, but it looks like a cracking betting um, card anyway, at least. There's loads of opportunities, yeah. It's a, it's, it's a really nice card. And I think these series of Saturdays and, and Sundays at the Cora we've had over the summer, there's been some really competitive races. I think even the Maidens, you can watch a lot of them and see three or four, which you're going to the notebook for, for the next day. So, um, no, I, I love this time of year at the Curra. Um, and hopefully we get a good turnout on Saturday for the Pat Small and Charity Race Day because there's there's an awful lot of goodwill towards it. A lot, lot of hard work got into it. There's fundraising activities on and off the track. I know Gavin Lynch and his team there with the Curra to Curra cycle is on in the morning. And we've obviously got the charity race there in the afternoon. So, look, at the, there's loads happening. And if you, I just encourage you, if you are able to go at all, uh, I'm sure your support will be very much appreciated there. And there's been some really good things happening with the pancreatic cancer research that's happened as a result of the fundraising through through Pat's in AIM. So um be very, very special if that flame can keep lit. I'm sure it will be. And it's great to see, as I mentioned there's before we came on air in the charity race, PJ Smullen down on a race card again. It's it's a, a little bit uh, it's a little bit special to see that again. So best luck to Paddy in, in, in his ride there. But I'm sure we'll touch on it later on. But um no, look at loads going on at the car and hopefully it's a great day. Yeah, it, it should be a great day out, and yeah, anyone who's around should definitely get down there because it's nothing like a day out at the car, especially if, if the weather be nice now. The weather's starting to pick up here, so hopefully it will be a nice one. But we'll drive into the racing then, like you said, plenty on, and we'll start with look. We'll have a quick talk about the maid, the one forty five first race on the cars. I don't know if it's the whole pile to say though. Um, I had imagined this Acapulco Bay after a really eye catching one here behind Delacroix will probably be odds on. I'd imagine Ryan Moore is on board for the first time. Were you impressed by your mark? He was fairly eye catching the last time. Yeah, look at it. Even in the Irish field column we have for the horses to follow, I think I said this fellow was a candidate for eye catcher of the season last time. Uh, slow early, green early on. And I think looking even at the course track sectionals, I think through each of the final four furlongs, he was faster than Anthony Nelson. Uh, I think he was the only horse to break under 22 seconds for the last two furlongs. Um, and he's well bred too. I think is he out of a half sister to, or out of a sister to Magic Wand? Really good Bally Doyle filly back in the day. So, um, yeah, look, at loads to like about him. He's going to be a short price, but um, I thought looking at it, that you're, you're looking for something to step up to try and take him on. I didn't see uh, anything crazy on paper that was making me terrified if you were thinking about taking the short price. But look, if you keep an eye on the market, I suppose, with those, some of those newcomers, that'll guide you if there maybe is something uh, spooky lurking. But with normal improvement from that debut, I tell you, he'll be very, very difficult to beat Hackabulco Bay. Lovely horse. Yeah, you'd imagine. So he's got some fancy, fancy entries as well later on in the year. So yeah, he's probably won. Um, it's hard enough to oppose in the first, but we'll go on to the 220. It's a race for two old fillies over the mile. And again, we've got an Aidan O'Brien favourite in here, Dreamy, who got off the mark at Glorious Goodwood at the start of August. I was really impressed by her, Mark. I suppose Opera Singer won this last year on the way to a kind of a big day um, on Arc weekend. Probably a good enough chance uh, a real classic contender could come out of here. I, li I liked this dreamy last time, obviously out of um, Tapestry, Yorkshire Oaks winner as well. Um, what was your review on this one? Yeah, some of them Ballydoy fillies you're seeing now and even Colts, like the the, the mares that have come from, through Aiden's hands in the last decade to see what they're producing now. It's it's really exciting times. Uh, I mean, you can recognise one like Tapestry, she was always really good too. But yeah, I, I'm the same as you, I thought attitude-wise, you'd love what Dream, Dreamy delivered at Goodwood. And, you know, first time up as well, you, you know, usually associate natural improvement to come with once from Aiden's when they go to the races first time. So I think there there is a lot to like about her. If I had one thing to crab her with, I, I think in a race like this, a mile group three, lacks a little experience. You know, she's probably the joint or the least experienced outright filly in the lineup. Um, but just some of them there, like Cy No More, I've been really taken by what she's been doing for Joseph O'Brien, but this is a huge change in conditions. She's been running on heavy in Galway. I remember she came from the clouds there, traded a thousand in running, and similarly in Roscommon, made hard work of it, but I really like what she's doing. I think she's a smart filly, but um, just think of getting onto quick ground, it's, it's an unknown that you have to accept with her. Um, Mark Prescott's runner coming over, you'd have to have a little bit of respect for that too. And Fiery Lucy, her experience is going to stand to her there, second in the Ballyhane race last time. But when you're looking at some of these, I think the one that you don't really have any awareness of what the ceiling could be, that's dreamy. Um, if the lack of experience doesn't catch her out, you know, she, she's probably hard to look beyond, isn't she? Yeah, she is. You kind of mentioned experience. I suppose the Sir Mark Prescott one coming over, Colin Keane, like, I'll be catching, but she, she has the experience. 
But she's ready to nine to four. Like you'd, you'd, you'd probably be hoping and dreaming that Dreamy could be kind of like a classic contender next year. Look, I suppose stepping up the extra furlong as well will help her. Like you said, she kind of she kind of got there late on. Um, you'd imagine kind of middle distance ships will be will be her um forte next year. I suppose Paddy Toomey's one Lady Marion has to be interesting as well. She was obviously second to Bubbling. It was kind of a bit disappointing that Bubbling was pulled out of the debutante last week. Probably have a better grip of that form if, if she had shown up and um ran against by time story that day but she kind of she ran in that maiden in Galway that's the one that kind of produces all those good fillies I think Purple Lily and Tahira a few more um really top class fillies came out of it um she was coming up against a Bally Doyle filly that day as well who had the vote under her belt um Lady Marion she looked a bit green and even um I actually met Paddy Toomey afterwards and he thought she'd be fairly hard to beat the next day so it's interesting that he kind of throws her into deep enough water here next time instead of just going for that maiden win but um I was really impressed by Dreamy and I think 15 to 8 doesn't look a bad price about her at all but Lady Marion maybe the one to follow her home for me just, um just that Lady Marion in, um, actually in talking about just when you talk about horses debut in a Galway I did a piece a couple of weeks ago in the paper and I was looking back at how difficult it is maybe for horses to win at different tracks first time up at two mm. and I suppose maybe to look at the challenge that some of them face like you know the demand and track you're on the turn was a stiff finish and um, but the only six horses i could find i think since 2019 to have won as two-year-olds at galway on debut uh kiprios is one of them tahira is another grosvenor square time form 118 uh purple lily uh, you know an irish oaks place philly paris secret is a great three winner at santa anita 104 and alexandropolis he was placed in the body sacks basically before this year when the dan blanche won they were your only five and they're all 100 plus on time form so maybe when you know if you are running well on debut at galway without winning I, I, I certainly take that angle that you can mark up performance like that, Lady Marion. Some some stats to pull out there. Yeah, it's it's not it's not an easy place to win on debut, and I'd say that bubbling is probably above average as well. It's just a pity we didn't see her running last weekend to kind of get a bit better grip of it. But I'd say Lady Marion could want a big race here. But um, I'm with you on Dreamy. I'd say she could be probably one of the ones where we're looking forward to next year. I think she, she's around twenty to one for the Oaks um next year. So maybe she's worth a small bit of an each way punt before she runs here, possibly even. But we'll go on to the two fifty. Then it's a race for the two year old Colts over the six furlongs. And again, um, three and oh, three eight, no brain favorites. Ides of March comes here with Ryan Moore on board. He was behind line in the winter right here, two starts back and got off the mark last time. Um, they were kind of touting as a middle park course. Obviously, 10 sovereigns picked this race up on the way to winning the middle park as well. Um, what are your thoughts on him, Mark? I, I didn't particularly like this race, to be honest, Emma. I, I Ides of March, I came away from his second start to the car a little bit dubious of him. I think just didn't stay a seven is probably the, the easy answer. And um, the line in winter is clearly hugely exciting I think their the time form lads were putting them down as uh, of Aiden's derby winners I'd say I think only uh, only Galileo and City of Troy were rated higher than the Lion Winter on debut so that was the maiden he's faced into maybe I should be a little more forgiven um, but I just don't view him as completely bomb proof I thought Rudy's apple with a bit of experience as well albeit that uh, Phoenix takes form is a little bit mixed like obviously if Whistle Jack comes out and wins the morning Arizona Blaze he runs a cracker in York in the sales race but he's still beaten by a horse in the 70s and uh, then the horse of Richard Fahey is the Watanan horse he disappointed in Ripon. So it's a little bit mixed, but I just think at the prices, you're you're, you're taking a lot on uh, what you saw last time in a maiden versus Rudy's apple. I, I, I like the fact he's gone and won a nursery off 90. We know he can run to a level. He's, he's got a mark of 102. It's probably hard to weigh up somebody. He's like, who's the Tohi, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, I've done it because, um, again, a likeable filly went to Goodwood last time, you know, and some of those divisions can be competitive. I find them sprint level ones uh, for the Irish trying to go over to for all that Michael Callahan had a winner at Glorious Goodwood there with, with a sprinter. But yeah, I, I think just at the prices, if, if that's the way it's shaping up tomorrow, I'd much rather take a look at uh, Rudy's apple uh, than Ides of March. But uh, this isn't a race that I'd be trying to make a fortune by any means. I think I'd be taking a little bit of a pull. Yeah, there was plenty of money floating around for Rudy's apple taking. Obviously, a massive step up and going a grade last time going to the Phoenix. But back in camera waters here, yeah. Look, I was looking to take on the favourite as well. I, 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 like, like you said, I don't think he's probably the most bomb-proof five to six shot you'll find. I was actually kind of interested in Michael O'Callaghan's morning Vietnam. Now it's a bit of a maybe a bit of a shot in the dark. He obviously he won his maiden on Dundalk, wasn't the the hottest maiden of the year early on in the year, obviously, but. Um, the kind of quotes from Michael afterwards were fairly encouraging. They were kind of thinking of him as maybe a horse for Ascot. But if you watch his next two starts, he kind of lost the race before the start. Um, I think behaviour was the problem. But they gilded him before he returned to Cork then and a massive upturn in form. 
um, seems to kind of uh, put him back into line a bit. He showed a really smart turn of foot that day. Look, he's stepping up again and probably against better horses this time. But I think nine to one, he's a horse who's probably been highly touted and they think they might have him back on track here. So look, against a favourite who probably isn't the most bomb proof of the first, like we both like the first two Aidan O'Brien favourites. Um, but I'm going to take him on here with Morning Vietnam. Nine to one doesn't look a bad price about him. Colin Keane back on board um, for the first time in two runs as well. Um, I'm just hoping he can kind of keep that kind of up turn of form after being gelded, it could, be, it could be the making of him, I'm hoping. But um, we'll move on to the next one then. It's the 325, the Snow Fairies, Philly Stakes. This is a really interesting contest. Um, a few three old fillies taking on the older fillies. The three olds have a really good record in this race, so I think they've won seven of the last eight renewals. Um, and that's kind of reflected in the market here. Johnny Murta's Hanalia is quite fancy there at five to two, and Joseph O'Brien's Luru coming back after a good run in France, um, as well as Wingspan, who won the Harry Hurry Harry at last time at Goran. Um, what was your view on this one, Mark? Yeah, I, I just thought that you know the Aga Khan he's got a strong hand here in it and um at the prices, I thought Tarawa might be a little bit shorter. And you just know that this is her optimum trip, nine furlongs. Like she's very, very good uh, earlier in the year. I think at the Glen Cairn at Leopardstown uh, wasn't the most, you know, I don't think it was the hottest Glen Cairn you've ever seen, but won it really decisively. Good ride. And last time bumped into Diego Velasquez again in, in open company. Um, I think coming back to her own sex is going to suit her. Um, I, I just thought at the prices, she's actually one that you know is effective at the level herself and uh, Hanalia are, are equal according to the handicapper, albeit I know a little bit less weight there at the three-year-old taking on the four-year-old. Um, but Hanalia, I thought it was a tough race in the Irish Oaks last time. Um, thought she appreciated a little bit of ease in the ground possibly when she beat Lily Hart in the maiden earlier in the year for all the conditions are better at Nace. But like, coming back down on a trip is from a mile and a half is, is probably a good fit for her. But she might just be a 10 furlong filly rather than a 9 furlong filly where I just think Tarawa... That is her optimum. Um, Wingspan is obviously a valley oil filly on the up. You know, you never like to, to draw a line and say that's where their their ceiling of improvement has is, is, is stopped. Um, but I do think a little bit more is required and when beating one look in, in Gore. And I don't I think one look again, she's she's not the filly she was last season, but you know, did Frank the form in Killarney since. Uh, but I, I'm just not viewing her maybe with, through the same uh, lovely glasses that I had on watching her last season. But um yeah, I, I just thought that the price is Tarawa. Um Philly, who at this level has proven her, even last year, her run in Newmarket, she was not beaten far at all in a listed race over there, beaten by Capice. I think she's just very, very solid. Whereas a three year old like Hanalia, who has turned out kind of quickly enough, is building a city. No, she's had four weeks, five weeks since her uh, her last start. But uh, just in general, this sequence of races, I just like the fit of Tarawa here. Yeah, I like can definitely have a strong enough hand. Look, I, I was probably with Johnny Murta, Johnny Murta's one, Hanalia. Um, I just I just kind of liked her all season to manage. She won her maiden well here. It worked out fairly well. The second that day, I think Lily Hart wasn't she third in the Give Tank Stakes at Cork there a few weeks ago. Obviously won her um Oaks trail then and went on to run in the Oaks and kind of just mentioned that Oaks um won like the form of it has been franked massively, I suppose, last uh, last week in the Yorkshire Oaks. Um first and second content and you looked you got to me look like two really top class fiddies and just watching back her run in that um I think Ben Cohen kind of maybe made the decision to follow Ryan Moore which probably nine 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 times out of ten is definitely the right thing to be doing but it, it was a troubled one for her in fairness um content didn't get out for a long time and Hanalia was kind of in the same boat it took her a long time to get out in the clear and, and get her run down the outside there but she was staying on very strongly and I think the form of that Irish Oaks is really really strong um like you said the drop back to nine furlongs might be the question mark about her but I think she's a fairly classy filly um and the, with the records of three olds in here um she's getting the seven pounds from the older fillies I, I like her and I think um she can get a a, a big one on the board for Johnny Murta I'm hoping um she looks like a progressive filly now the, the drop down trip is the, the only thing I'm really worried about with her like you said the nine furlongs mightn't be her optimum but um I really like that that run on the Irish oak so I'm hoping she can kind of get back to winning ways here again but we will go on to the four o'clock we're kind of working our way through them nicely um so the four o'clock is the FBD's nurseries handicap for the two year olds over seven furlongs I suppose a good enough place to start here is girl like you we've no we've races obviously but I'd imagine she'd probably be right up there she won a handicap here last time I think she's up eight pounds for that effort though Mark can she continue her winning streak off off this Mark when you look at the, the margin she won by last time I, I can't put my finger on exactly but it might be under a length that she won by last time and you think you get eight pounds mm. it's it geez, might be a bit severe but I thought there was a little bit of style about what she did on the day and uh you know 
the old adage, top weights in a nursery. I, I haven't gone digging into to how uh, much that stands up to scrutiny on, on, on their stats, but you know, you, you do see it often enough. I think Rudy, Rudy's apple might have been uh, top weight, and he won the first nursery season for Joseph here at the Curra. Um, but I just, yeah, I've got a, a very hard to get away from her, I think, because there's probably a lack of depth in the race. Um, the, for first run in particular, I was very encouraged by that. Like the run with Tunbridge Wells, I think Mighty Aru, who went and, and ran very, very well afterwards in, in group company, um, you know. On the back of that day, I thought we would be, wouldn't be dealing with a filly who'd be in nursery company off 77 or 85. I thought she'd be a bit better than that. And maybe she just needed to find her feet. I think they found out a rider as well. A bit of cover, she seems to like that. Um, and you know, I wouldn't be concerned going from six to seven with her either. Um, an American pharaoh, you'd imagine it shouldn't be problematic. It could even bring out improvement the way she came home the last day. Um, so I think that's going to help her offset the, the, the rise. Um, I thought Sugar Club heading into Ross Common. I really liked she did at Bellystown, albeit it wasn't a fancy maiden, but I really liked she did there. And maybe just heavy ground caught her out last time. Uh, you know, it was pretty testing ground. As he said, Sino Moore won that race, and that was demanding conditions, one that had proven itself in very demanding conditions in Galway previously. So, you know, if she was able to be a different filly back on decent ground again, having one on good at Bellystown, um, she's one that could be better than 77. And I think the No Mead camp do like her. And maybe one just down the bottom, if you're, if you're looking at a big price, I think Churchill Gale is one that's better than she's shown so far. Six pound out of the handicap, I don't like that. Hence again, it's one that would have been on my short list, but tease me back towards girl like you. But I do think she's one that can win a nursery before the year is out um, for Tom McCourt. James Ryan takes off three, trying to offset that six pound out of the handicap thing. But um, I keep an eye on her for maybe future reference, but I just think girl like you looks like the class angle of the race, really. Yeah, she looks to be one on the upper. I'd be interested to see what kind of prices um these ones open up at. But one, what I kind of liked was Nyman there for Henry de Bromhead and Billy Lee. Um, had a nice winner at Navin there last night. They're kind of a pair who have a fairly good strike rate together. She actually ran, she was behind a girl like you, similar to her. She was making a handicap debut um last time here over the six. I just think watching that run, she she kind of did a lot right. Or he, sorry, he did a lot right. Um he bought he bought quickly from this from the stalls. Um kind of Billy Lee got him got him settled in. Um and didn't really get too serious him until late enough on, gave him a few backhanders and he stayed on quite well. I'd say the step up and trip could suit him fairly well. He wasn't beaten an awful long way by a girl like you and actually meeting here on £10 better terms from Nyman. I think he went down too, she went up eight for that. So I think on £10 better terms, he can definitely get an awful lot closer to, to the Joseph O'Brien filly. Um, it'll be interesting to see what kind of price he opens up at. But if he, if he, if he was um, a, a nice price there, I'd say he could run a big race. And for a combination who do fairly well together, Henry de Bromid and Billy Lee. Um, Billy Lee is just firing in the winners recently. Um, yeah, I, I liked my man there. He was kind of one that stuck out to me. But we'll go on to the feature race of the day, the Paddy Power Irish Cambridgeshire. Um, look, a mild handicap, uh, 24 runners declared. I suppose it looks like a wide open heat, but um, I suppose a good place to start is where Colin Keane is riding, and that is state actor for Bill Farrell. It's kind of notable, I suppose. He obviously had the choice of genuine article as well for his father, Jerry Keane. Um, they're too high up in the betting state actor. I suppose the case is fairly obvious for him. He looks like um, a four-year-old on the up. Um, but Mark, I'll hand it over to you. What was your um, thoughts on this one? Yeah, no, state actor. Look, I, I, I like the horse, um, and, and you couldn't but like what he's done this season. I think last time, if you're the way the race unfolded on, on Derby weekend, it was obviously a strong pace, and he just got away from them. I think he got a little bit further back in the ruck, and look, maybe you know the one in front of him, Booya, he did manage to, to make the best of the situation, and did did get up, but I. I I just don't feel it unfolded very kindly. And even in the grand scheme of things, state actor, he's not an overly experienced horse. You know, he's after coming a long way in a short space of time. Bill Farrell, look, she spoke to for a piece in the paper this weekend. He's, you know, they've given him time to mature and he's kept improving away. They're hoping there might be a bit more improvement in him again. And, uh, you know, the last day, I think they said possibly not quite sure that he, he moved as well as he could, but feel he's in right good form again. So, um, you know, Colin Keane is stuck with him. I, I see that. I think Colin hasn't done any lighter than 8-10 in the last year. And Genuine okay. Article is down at 8-8. Eight, eight. So I'm wondering maybe, was that a factor? In, but now look at 100,000 yeah, Irish Cambridge. Whether you could push the push the dial for it. I'm not quite sure what way his, his minimums are set. But James Ryan claiming three there. You'd like that. I actually really fancy Genuine Article at Galway. Uh, I was very disappointed having liked him at nice prices and then seen him trade 1-7 to seven and not get by. It was a... It wasn't the nicest of watches, but they've put the cheek pieces on him now. And, you know, maybe he actually didn't do a whole pile wrong. It, it was one of those days at Galway where over those shorter distances, the pace was just holding up. It was almost as if they got out, got a posse, and some of them were dropping the anchor, and it was impossible to come from behind. And he was in the right position, but maybe the winner just got the great leader on the day. Maybe he just was better handicapped and, you know, 
be- better place to gain forward at the genuine article. So I- I'd be forgiven of that. Um, but if you're looking for one, I think at a bit of a price, I mean, my, my pen and fall, I think Vera's Secret is what I'm going to take a chance on. Um, around 16 to 1, I think, is out there at the moment, top price. And if you're getting any enhanced places with that, I'd be very interested in Vera's Secret. Um, it's not too often you see handicaps the car won by six and a half lengths like she did last time and absolutely hacked up. And uh, now look, at it's it's a big setup to go from that and winning off 68 to now being in, in an Irish Cambridgeshire. I fully get that. Um, but I just think when one wins with the swagger that she won with there, um, I think there's an awful lot of improvement. She's very, very likely raced for a five-year-old mare. I think she only had four starts. And Johnny Feen, you know, he's, he's capable in some of these big handicaps of the car. We've seen him show up well in them before. Um, just think that she's won the, the handicapper. How could he have met? I think he'd give her 17 for the last day. A huge hike. But what else could he do? It was it was a, a massive massive performance off sixty eight. So she's one to me that we just do not know how good she is, and she's still getting in here off eight stone eight. Um, and she's proven herself over the course and distance. Has won on good ground, uh, very unexposed. I just think at the prices, I I nearly rather take a, a flyer at her each way if I was getting a few enhanced places rather than trying to solve the very top of the market from a win perspective. But look, it's a this is a Cambridgeshire where, you know, typical Cambridgeshire as it should be, you can make a case for plenty of them. I just thought Vera's secret 16 to 1 was, was a bit of value. Yeah, that's definitely an interesting. I, I like um I like the trainers run as well in these big handicaps. He, he he'll always have them nearly bang around there anyway, even if they don't win, they'll they'll, they'll normally be up in the placings. And yeah, she, she's definitely an interesting one at an each way price. I was kind of taking a similar view to you, um, plenty you can make a case for, but I was looking, I actually watched back last year's race and one who's kind of sticking out he was second in this last year blues emperor for johnny murta and wesley joyce and um, wesley's back on board for the first time in 12 months and he's coming here off a five pound lower mark um he was obviously beating my corridor who reopposes here again but kind of just looked like maybe he lost his spark a tiny bit after that one but his last few ones i think you can take plenty of encouragement for them um he's he's running two big handicaps here and he seems to be kind of getting back to it um even going back a few ones he's on the Emer- emerald mild here um that was kind of towards the start of the season he was given 10 pounds to state actor he was only two lengths behind him there and um in fifth but and they, they meet on they meet on level weights here again so they're meeting him in an awful lot better terms here and even going to he's he's one in the Conan quill mile at galway he did a lot of the donkey work that day. like he, he obviously likes to be ridden handily um, which is really, really hard to do with Galway, like especially in, in that column Quill Moyle, they can often come sweeping from behind. He just got maybe swallowed up a small bit, but I just liked his attitude. He battled away on and, and kept going well. Um, look, Wesley's back on board for the first time in 12 months. He's kind of creeping away down the way. It's maybe slowly enough, but he hasn't run an awful lot since this, since this race last year either. But look, five pounds lower in. Um, he seems to be in good enough health. And um, Wesley's claim the five pounds will, 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 um, should have a good effect here and like i said he wasn't an awful long way behind the favorite there state actor when they met earlier on in the year and he's meeting on him a lot better terms here so look i think 14 to 1 um might even be a bit, bit bigger on the day it's probably worth a bit of a crack each way because he's kind of a horse look he's 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 consistent um he knows how to run a good race in these big handicaps and um just creep creeping away down the way it's like i said he might uh, be able to get one under his belt before the end of the season so I'm kind of taking a similar each way view on that one. But we'll go on then to the last race we're going to talk about really seriously on the day is the Al Basti Equi World Apprentice Handicap. The French is over the six furlongs. They'll probably go hot and heavy here, Mark. Um, look, on the t- on the tissue, we've no prices for this yet, but Gold Mile, um, Secret Magician and Dynamic Force look to probably be the most likely market leaders in here. Was there anything standing out for you? Yeah, this is a nice one, isn't it? A nice present to, to give you to try and solve for, for a finish. Um, I actually thought that the handicapping of Devil's Angel was quite interesting. Uh, he's down five pounds from his last run at Nace. Now, I know them horses were revised. There was a revision where horses were dropped, I think, an average of kind of one to three pounds recently. So you factor that in that the population generally has come down. Um, but I thought this guy actually ran relatively encouraging last time, and it would have been in a better grade than this a race won by Memar, and it was a decent one of Eddie Lyons, but I say decent, but an effective sprint handicapper of Eddie Lyons, collective power was second in the race. Um, but I just thought Devil's Angel, I think the rider might have lost his stick on the day as well, um, thought it was relatively encouraging. He's down to 66. He won eight times in Britain, and his last win was off a mark of 80. Uh, and he would just join Kevin Coleman, and that's an outfit I have an awful lot of time for. I think he's very, very capable, Kevin. Mm. And this horse, second start for, for the team, big improvement from the first day. Um, if there was another step forward again, and he's down to a mark like this, I think he'd be quite dangerous. Rory Mulligan, it's obviously an apprentice race. He takes off another seven. So he's just getting into interest in handicap territory, I think, this horse. But it is a competitive race for the grade. Like, I think sometimes in this kind of 75 grade, you can rule out a lot of the field. This is probably a little bit more difficult. I think that's probably a product of the Cora 
having these minimum values is 20 grand is the minimum for any race the current season and it's something you'd like to see other tracks uh you know embrace as well if, if at all possible but i think you, as a result you get these these more competitive races um i think secret magician he's turned a corner again in recent starts thought he lost his way he's definitely come back to form unlucky just get touched off by keki last time here uh, having won at Nace. Rappel, he's in real form for Paul Finn as well. Um, Keith and Kennedy, a decent book on this. I think Keith and is a young rider going places too. But, you know, it is it is very, very open. But I just thought if you're getting a bit of value, I don't know what your tissue says there. Unfortunately, my screen is a little bit small for Devil's Angel. But if he was an each way price, I could see him run a nice race. Yeah, I'd imagine that he, he's looking like a each way prices on the tissue. And I'll just have a look here now. Devil's Angel. Yeah, he's in 20 to 1. Wouldn't be too bad if he came up like that um, when, when the prices chance, go up later this evening. <laughs> it has to be an each way chance, yeah. Um, look, I, 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 Secret Magician is one I'm kind of a fan of. Um, I, I love that the Martin Hassett stable. They, they can really get one ready for these uh, races. And and Wayne Hassett in these kind of apprentice handicaps, he's um, he's probably look, he's probably one of the best apprentices around this season. He's a, he's he's le he's leading the leaderboard as well. Like you said, he's kind of come back to form a bit. Um, the last few ones, I suppose the chief piece has made a bit of a difference. Some interesting enough comments from Martin though. I think was it after he won in Navin. That they might try and keep him out of these apprentice handicaps because they just go so fast. And he, I'd say he's ours who just likes to kind of travel within himself and not be um hassled along too much. And he was kind of able to do that the last twice. Um, I was kind of looking to see where's an awful lot of pace in in this. And the only one I could really see that's going to probably burst out and blaze a trail could be Amy Joey's on on Tim Doyle's Gold Mile. He uh, Wayne actually rode him the last day here at the Cora, and um he bounced out and made all. But look. I don't think there's an awful lot that's going to put Secret Magician under under serious pressure to travel. Um, and he's a horse who likes to, like I said, travel away within himself. And he just seems to have improved again for the chief pieces. Like he won a race here at the Curra, was it almost twelve months ago? Off operating a seventy three. He's down. He's still four pounds below that mark, and he's he's definitely in good health. And the Martin Hassett horses are running really really well. I think Wayne Hassett. Um, like I said, one of the one of the best around. That you mentioned the Paul Flynn rappel. It'll be interesting. I think <laughs> I was kind of trying to figure out which way the race would be going, which is probably a dangerous enough game to be playing in these um, apprentice races. Like rappel likes to come from off the pace. Um, he's 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 a, he's definitely a Gildan who's who's on the up. Um, dropped back to five furlongs last time, didn't he? But he's back up to six here again, which probably looks like he's better trip. But look, I, I'll probably I'll probably side with Secret Magician. But I um, mean, it'll be interesting to see what kind of prices they open up at as well. Um. Your Devil's Angels for Kevin Coleman could be a nice uh, each way shout in there. Like you said, Kevin Coleman's definitely a, a stable to follow. He he, he um, can pop up with a big price winner as well. But so that's kind of it for the main races on the day. Well, <laughs> the charity race, uh, the last race of the day, obviously, we won't go into too much detail on that. I don't have riders up here on the screen. Do you, do you know what um, young Paddy Smullen is riding this one? Just have a look here. I think by your side, he's down to ride for Gordon Elliott. Um, and you know, for one last amount of Tremor, a mile and a half, you'd imagine actually the way this horse travels over hurdles as well, he'd be a very fun ride in a race like this. You'd imagine he's going to take you a fair way into the contest. So, um, yeah, look, best of luck to him. I'd, I'd love to see him run a big race. And fair play to Gordon, he is a good man to support these races too. And there's plenty of trainers in there who do put their weight behind it. But you know, you see names you'd recognize there like Icar de Bois, Jungle Cove, he seems to turn up in all these, these charity races. and Hopefully he gives Charlie O'Neill of ITM a good spin around as well. And uh, no, look, there's, it's, it's a great initiative. And I think it, it brings uh, a lot of feeling of goodwill to the car on a day like that. And I think that gets people in, in a gate, I guess, and you know gives them a, a good experience. And obviously in, in, in name, a very, very deserving and something we all need to get behind as a, as a, a, a charity and, a, and an initiative. So um, I, I, because you couldn't be negative about this as a, as a, as a, a prospect. And look, I hope they all enjoy it. I hope they all come home safe and some experience be able to do it. But uh you wouldn't be uh, begrudging Paddy Smullen whatsoever if he was there to do it. It'd be fantastic. No, it'd be brilliant. And his sister Hannah wrote her first winner, I think, earlier this season as well. So it'd be nice to see him um, get one on the board as well. Yeah, it'd be a great day at the Corridor tomorrow. And yeah, it would be just a great day out. But Mark, we'll we wrap it up there. I think we've gone through we've gone through every race, basically, except for the charity race. Um, but I'll ask you for a nap before we finish up um, for the viewers. Oh, yeah. Uh... I think girl like you probably just makes sense in the context of the race. I know she's got a got a hike in the weights, but I just think she's just got a bit of a class edge on them. So I'd have a go with girl like you for Joseph O'Brien. I think that might be in the four o'clock. Very good. I'm going to actually stick with Dreamy in the two twenty. Yeah, the Newton Newton Anner um stakes. Look, I, I actually thought she'd be a shorter price, to be honest, when I was looking at this yesterday. I was I was kinda of surprised she opened up there at fifteen to eight. I think that looks like a good enough price. Um I think stepping up the furlong should bring out even better than her again. And she could be a really high class lady like we saw Opera Singer last year. Maybe 
know, it might be a bit of a stretch to say she'll be that good, but I'd say she could be one on the up definitely for Aidan O'Brien. But we'll finish up there, Mark. Thanks very much for all your contributions. Um, I hope everyone watching enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure and like and subscribe to the channel because we'll have more coming in the next couple of weeks. Thanks for tuning in.